Hey, what's up guys? So in today's video, we're gonna be building a game. We're going to be cloning the game Stack, which was a popular iPhone game from like a decade ago, I wanna say. Um, so I have cloned um, this repo from Yifu Chen. He rewrote this game in WebGL, 3JS, open sourced it um, about seven years ago now. Uh, unfortunately, his version is massively incomplete. As you can see, everything is just a boring gray block. We wanted to change colors. Um, if you get like a perfect stack, there's no sort of like animation playing. There's no actual, um, I don't even know if I can get a perfect stack actually. Yeah, I can. Okay. It needs, it's not getting faster the further it goes on. You can see there's no actual counter. Wait, here we'll fail right here. Um, this is fake. The, this is actually hard coded into the code base. So I have an entire to-do list here of changes that I'm going to want the AI to make for me. Um, so I'm not a, um, a game developer at all. I mostly do like web development and backend uh, AI inference and stuff. But today we're going to be doing this, where I'm choosing this to be a very visual test, um, a very visual test of how good our coding agent is doing. Um, so we're going to be having two coding agents. We're going to be having OpenAI's Codex and we're going to be having um, OpenAI's O3. So they are actually both the same model, but they're both in two separate environments. Okay, so... Um, what OpenAI did is they cloned, uh, they, they, they forked their O3 model uh, and fine-tuned it for a coding specifically and called it Codex, uh, the model. And the Codex model can only currently be used within the Codex platform, um, which is this platform that I'm looking at right here, which was what we're going to be reviewing today. Um, and not to be confused with Codex, the CLI tool. Let's talk about OpenAI's Codex platform. The, the, so the way Codex works is that you will link a uh, GitHub repo. I have a couple GitHub repos linked right here. Um, and then you will pick a branch um, and then you will tell it to do a task and then it will go off and um, do these tasks asynchronously. So the idea is that rather than me editing code within my terminal, um, it, with the human in the loop, a synchronous sort of uh, flow between me and the AI, the AI will go off and do all of the editing for itself, by itself. Um, and what we're testing right now is how well does the AI, how, what we're testing right now is how well will uh, Codex be able to do on its own without my human feedback uh, in solving all of these issues that I've uh, outlined to improve the stack game versus uh, versus me, which is in, I'm gonna be here in my daily driver, in, which is cursor, and I'm gonna be using O3. Um, so this is a very fair comparison uh, because we're both basically using the same AI model under the hood. Um, we're just doing it in two different platforms. We're doing it the synchronous cursor platform versus open AI platform. Um, so, so far I have not had much luck with open AI's uh, codex platform. And I'm gonna say as a review, it's been pretty disappointing. Um, I don't really know why some people are hyping it up so much on Twitter. Like, I think that, I, I, I don't know. Like, I have not had great results with it. The results I've had so far have been like, I ask it to do a task and then uh, I ask it to like keep following up on that task and do more and like make some changes to it. And it will uh, forget the progress that it made previously. So I'll, you'll be at like, you know, you do version one of files, it goes to version two, version three, you're like, okay, now change this. And it goes back to like version two. And you're like, what happened to version three? I liked version three. And like, it, it just, it, it was so far I've been very inconsistent. Um, the biggest downside of the open AI uh, of O of Codex is that the agent that's running asynchronously has no access to the internet while it's running. Um, so let me explain this a little more. So the way, Codex works is that you need to create an environment first. So you link it to a repo, right? And then you pick a container. Right now there's only one container, the universal container, but in the future you'll be able to pick your own uh, custom containers, I imagine. It says coming soon. Um, you can uh, configure the packages that you're being used. Um, so uh, what you need is your own setup install script. So in this case, in this repo, what it's doing is uh, it's starting a container image. It's um, cloning. So it's starting. So what it's doing is it's starting up a Docker container. It's Git cloning my entire code base into this repo. And then on top of that, it's going to run whatever script that you tell it to run. So in this case, I'm just telling it to go install, um, which will install all of the Golang dependencies. So then if the AI agent is running in my code base is, is so then as the AI agent is running within this container in some, at some future point in time, um, it will have access to all of the dependencies which were installed because like at runtime, it won't be able to uh, install anything else. 
Um, so like, but and the AI, for some reason, OpenAI didn't tell their AI agent that it won't have access to the internet while it's running. So like, if you go through its thought processes, it'll be doing a bunch of things like apt get, go get, go install, and then it'll like be failing and it'll be like, oh, that's, weird. and you'll like literally see a thought process outputting like, oh, it's weird, why can't I install anything? Oh, I can't install anything, weird. Like, because it's access to internet is disabled. And this is probably the single biggest weakness to using the codex environment. Um, one advantage using the codex environment is that the interface is very simple. So like, um, because I'm just, it's just a chat interface, I can basically be doing code review. I can basically be kicking off coding tasks and doing reviews of coding on my phone. I could basically, I could, I could basically be doing that on my phone, which is like a pretty cool that I don't need, I could be doing it maybe on a train. I don't need my laptop or anything. But anyway, so we're gonna be connecting to the Stackit repo, which is, which is my clone of Yifu Chen's um, code base right here. And so then we're going to be copying and pasting in all of the tasks. We're gonna be kick off all of the tasks in this code base and we're gonna see, and we're gonna compare um, the asynchronous versus the synchronous over here um, in cursor. All right, let's start this competition. So we're gonna push code over here and then we're gonna get a task popping up right here. And then while that's being worked on, then we will put a new one over here. Okay, so now you can see we kicked off four separate processes which are all running simultaneously. I tried to make these four, um, these, these four different I tried to make these four different sections as uh, independent and separate as possible uh, so that they can run without a bunch of conflicts. But um, when we do, when we get the code back for each of these, what we can do is we can do our own PR um, into, in, cause like each, each edit will be in its own branch. So we can do a pull request back into master. So uh, let's, go, let's go check on the, uh, the first one that we started off about a minute ago. Um, you can see right here, it's, uh, what is it doing? Okay, we can view the log of everything that's done since it started. Um, so it set up the environment. Um, it's looking. So it looked for an agent's MD file, didn't find it. It's looking through the repo, looking through the repo again. So it's getting kind of distracted by Firebase environment variables. Okay, it's looking through individual files. You can see that the file that it looked at right here, which is just. Um, this game is nicely organized into a bunch of independent little um, JavaScript, raw JavaScript files. So I think it should be easier for the LLM to understand. And you can see we already got a response back. Um, that was only in, what, two minutes? We got a response back. Now we're gonna create pull request. Um, and then we're gonna go view this pull request. All of the PRs that um, Codex is gonna put together are gonna merge into the Codex test branch. And then we're gonna create a um, cursor test branch. So like, I'm not even gonna waste my time trying to review this code uh, over here. Um, we'll just see, we'll, we'll just, we'll just, we're just gonna, we're, we're in, in, full, in typical vibe coding fashion, we're just gonna merge this into master without even looking at what it does. Um, so there we go. Who knows if it'll, it'll it, we'll, we'll find out if it works or not. chose better branch names. Okay, now we resolve one set of conflicts. We can merge that. Okay, so we got three conflict files. Let's see. Now, in a moment of truth, we're gonna test to see how well Codex did in our browser by actually playing the game. Okay, so let's see the list of changes that we wanted it to make. Okay, we can see, uh, it looks like it changed the color of the background. Hide the leaderboard. Okay. Um, looks like it broke the rendering. The clicks now no longer work. All right, so it's doing random colors, but the colors are supposed to be, you know, like kind of harmoniously moving between sections. It's going faster. The blocks are falling longer, it looks like. 
There's still no score display. I asked for a score display. We don't have a score display. Um, why was it going so? I mean, how, why, was it, why was it going so fast at first? Okay. Oh, there is a score display. Actually, it's just really hard to see. Okay. So it did implement some of the changes. Doesn't look like I get perfect stacks anymore. Yep, there's no animation for perfect stacks. All right, so it got some of the changes that we wanted. And now we're gonna be testing O3 running in cursor, in cursor's agent and see if it can outperform Codex. So while this is running, I should also talk about uh, pricing. So the Codex model, so this, 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 this Codex platform is only available right now if you buy the uh, ChatGPT Pro plan, which is $200 a month, which is, which is I realize is pretty expensive, but in my opinion, um, if intelligence is a commodity now, you wanna buy as much intelligence as you possibly can. So I think the uh, $200 a month, like if, if the $200 a month saves me a couple hours per month, then that, that's, that's well worth the price. Um, so, but, so the advantage is that once you pay that $200 a month price, you can use this basically as many times as you want. I'm sure there's some rate limiting, but I haven't run into any issues with the rate limiting. I, I, if you, any of you have run into rate limiting with Codex, I would like to hear how many requests you had to hit uh, before, before it caused an issue. Um, so of all the models I use, uh, O3 is the most expensive. So you can see over here in cursor, uh, all the API calls that I'm making. You can see all the API calls it's made already. It's made like one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, it made like 20 AP. It's, it's made like 20 API calls so far to O3. Um, so cursor has deliberately obf obfuscated how much they're charging you. Um, so each one of these requests is uh, four cents. So if you have 2.1 requests, that's basically like eight cents. Um, 1.6, you know, like they're not saying an exact dollar amount that each one of these requests is costing you, but like basically it's gonna add up. Um, you can like, as you, as, as O3 goes through its stuff, you can like watch the money, like, you, okay, how much are we at right now? All right, 249, let's see how much it has cost me by the end of this whole thing, by the, by the time we're done with all these. So I guess the disadvantage is that I am sitting here waiting for O3 to complete its set of tasks before I launch it onto another set of tasks. So it's using up some of my time. So um, it made a bunch of changes and I'm just gonna go through and, and, and in a typical vibe coding fashion, I'm not even gonna bother reviewing anything that it's doing. I'm just gonna like accept whatever it's doing. Normally, if this were like a serious code base, I would be going through these line by line um, making sure that it's not doing anything stupid or modifying anything I don't want it to modify. But in this case, like it's fine. This is just a throwaway code base anyway. And we're not even gonna bother checking its work until the very end. Um, so we'll just see how it does. So to make this comparison more fair, I'm not gonna be giving much feedback to uh, the O3 agent running in cursor because I didn't give any feedback to Codex, Codex running in Codex. So we'll keep this comparison fair. Um, human in the loop feedback was very important for keeping it on track normally though. Okay, you can see all the edits. So we can see all the edits that it made. You know, another advantage that I'm noticing here is that uh, cursor is using, that cursor's AI agent is relying heavily on the ES linter. Whereas um, I don't think that, that, that um, so I don't think Codex was even using a linter at all or any sort of like language server. Um, also, most of the time, because of the lack of any internet, internet, it can't really run any like even build commands, for example. Like, like if, 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 imagine if Codex wanted to, um, imagine if Codex wanted to add a dependency and then try to build an application over again. It literally can't. Because like to add the dependency would require it like have internet access to download the thing. So it just has to like, you know, and then, then, and then run it and see if it can build. Um, I think that Codex is really fucking gimped. So if you look at the two PRs into master from cursor versus Codex, uh, Codex did uh, modified 13 files, 257 lines added minus 40. Um, cursor modified 11 files, 278, um, added 278 lines. So both roughly, both roughly the same size of changes. 
Well, now let's see how uh, this version does. Let's see how Cursor's version does. Okay, so uh, we can see that the button that I asked to be removed is actually removed. The leaderboard is not here anymore, so that's great. Um, we can see the counter is in the middle centered. It's a little better. Um, whoa. Uh, looks like it kind of broke the game. Yeah, I can't really go on after one because um, it's not centered properly. Uh, let's, let's give it a little more feedback than that. All right, well, here's the final version from Cursor. I like that like the colors change more subtly. Uh, there's quite a few issues with it that it introduced. For example, like I want these bricks things to fall. As soon as the next one starts, they immediately, the old ones immediately disappear. Um, the fireworks and ripples also don't appear at all. What the fuck is going on? Like they, they look like they're just stuck there. Um, the, the, it does have the expanding logic where if you get a perfect stack, like it'll like start getting larger again, but like the game crashes when that happens and it's really weird. Also things are not going faster like they should have been. Okay, so this is the one from Codex. Oh fuck, clicking no longer works. Um, the colors seem kind of random. There is no animation for perfect stacks. If we can get it to, it does get faster, which is good. Whoa. I got a perfect stack and I, I think it was supposed to expand and the game just crashed. So in this case, I'm gonna give the win to Cursor overall by a slight margin, but they both kind of suck and they both kind of like introduced a lot of like problems and didn't really like solve the things I was hoping that they would solve in this game. Um, it still is pretty cool that in like about an hour's time, I could have a AI agent make these modifications to the game for me. Um, Cursor did cost a good amount. Like the, all those edits that we did, they cost, uh, you can see every one of these is a call to 03. Every time it's thinking, it's calling, 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 calling. These aren't even far apart. This is like 6, 601, 603, 604, 6, 610. It cost about like 11 and a half dollars to do those edits, um, which is still cheaper than, than Codex's um, $200, I guess, if this was the only thing I was using it for. Okay, I scored both games by hand based on the four categories that we set forward along with um, some negatives in case I noticed any bugs. So overall, Codex scored seven out of a possible 15 and uh, Cursor scored nine out of a possible 15. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty disappointed in actually both of the, I'm pretty disappointed in the performance of this model overall. Um, I didn't feel like these, tasks were that complicated um, but to be fair to the model like it doesn't have any sort of like visual feedback so like it's not like you can play the game and then see if what it's doing is working or not like get like actual reinforcement like learn like, like like an actual reinforcement learning outside of just whatever is provided by the linter you know um so i guess that's a pretty big limitation uh, particularly disappointing was like a lack of any like the ripples of the fireworks or it just couldn't get any of the visual effects to work right um it put the code in there to do them but like they just were never visible and they just never worked. Um, it was disappointing because they introduced multiple bugs where the, uh, curse, uh, um, Codex introduced the, at least two bugs that uh, interfered with the prior functioning of the game. Um, you know, these, these would be things like maybe if I back and forth, did, if I, maybe if I went back and forth with this for a couple hours, like these are things that we could like work out and fix. But um, overall, I'm pretty disappointed with the, um, with the performance of these models uh, for this task at least. Um, I, I know that OpenAI is trying to go with like a um, ChatGPT autonomous software agent, soft, so, software engineer agent that's going to re replace all of the software engineers in the world. Um, but like, it feels like they're pretty far from that. But nonetheless, it could be useful if like there's, you have a lot of quality assurance and you're babysitting it and you give it a lot of like feedback, like maybe you could find it to be pretty useful. I'm personally not using Codex right now for any of the development that I'm doing. But um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video that I make. Uh, peace out. Bye.